everybody, and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. Now today we're back with another video sponsored by one of my top tier patrons, Farallax. Anyone who sponsors the channel at the chosen level or above gets to sponsor a video topic, and today's video comes from Farallax. He asked the question, what are the missed opportunities with the one power within the Wheel of Time? In other words, what were some things that could have been done with the power that we never got to see? With a bit of crowdsourced research during my last live stream, I think we have it narrowed down to an interesting list of five missed opportunities with the one power. Now before getting into the video, let me first thank Farallax for his support of the channel, as well as everybody else over on Patreon who sponsors thegreatblight.com and the YouTube channel here. Without your support, we wouldn't have a website and we wouldn't be able to invest into some of the cool things that are coming down the road for that website. Now I had my monthly call with my top tier supporters for the channel on Patreon a couple days ago and we laid out a couple things that I'm excited for for the channel going forward. And my goals are to bring on two people as part-time staff to help run the channel and the website. And that should allow us to grow quicker and create better and more entertaining content. To get there, we're gonna to continue to need support from the channel's sponsors and from patrons like Fairlax. If you wanna sponsor your own video or be a part of my advisory council, or if you just wanna support the website and the YouTube channel, please consider taking a look at my Patreon. It's the absolute best way to support what we do here. And even support at the lowest tier goes a long way in bringing us closer to hiring those two people we need. You can find the link to the Patreon in the description of the video. Thanks to everybody who already supports us. You guys are so appreciated. Now let's go ahead and throw up a spoiler warning for the video. Today's video will carry a spoiler rating of red, with spoilers running all the way through A Memory of Light. If you haven't finished all the books of The Wheel of Time, please watch this video at your own risk. You're gonna get spoiled. You've been warned. So after pulling my live stream audience and doing a bit of thinking myself, I've narrowed this down to five missed opportunities with the one power. Now these are in no particular order, so let's just go ahead and jump right in, starting with number five. So coming in at number five on the list, we have exploring the ocean. Now you may be saying, Nablus, don't the sea folk like use the power to explore the ocean and make the wind push their ships around? And the answer would certainly be yes but that's not the type of exploring I'm talking about. We never see anybody in the series do any meaningful thing under the water. Uh, the only significant moment in the series is Nynaeve almost drowning and finally surrendering to Sidar. So how could the one power be used to explore the oceans? Well, let's start basic. The power can be used to create shields of air. We see this used by Ashaman to keep rain from hitting them. These barriers clearly keep water away. So what if a channeler were able to create a barrier of air large enough that there would be plenty of breathable air in that bubble, and they could propel themselves to the bottom of a lake or even the ocean? This would let them explore and salvage shipwrecks, document life in the oceans, or even kind of like a stealth means of travel. Now, of course, I do think it would take an extremely powerful channeler or perhaps a group of channelers to pull this off. For one, we know a channeler's strength in the one power controls the amount of weight that they can lift with the power. For instance, Swan Sanche tells us that prior to her stilling, she could easily lift a man in the air with the power, but after her stilling, she could barely hold Gareth Bryn in place. This means that the strength of the shields of air that a channeler can weave is tied to their strength in the power. Now, water weighs a ton, like literally. At the very bottom of the ocean, water pressure is over 15,000 pounds per square inch. So given that it can stretch the strength of a weak channel or like Swan after she's still just to lift a man off the ground, I would say that it would take a very strong channeler to go to a certain depth and maintain a shield. And most likely a link circle or an angriel or sangriel would be needed. So even despite these restrictions, it would seem very possible that the One Power could be used to create pockets of atmosphere underneath the water for use. So it's certainly not to say that using the One Power to create art, whether visual or musical, was not done in the Age of Legends or even in the current age, but we just don't ever get to see it. The closest thing that we get to this in the story is the Shan Chan Damani creating skylights, which are basically like their versions of fireworks. So why would the One Power be used for art in the first place? Well, for one, it enables the user to create things or manipulate materials in ways that would otherwise not be possible. Whether creating a statue or a building larger than it should be able to be made, or using the power to create sounds or colors that aren't possible, 
the artist has new abilities that a regular artist wouldn't if they were a channeler. We do know that various works were created with the One Power in the series that give us some ideas of the possibilities. One example is White Bridge. We know that the enormous bridge was made with the One Power, and it appears to many as too fragile to hold its own weight, yet it can't be broken or damaged as it was strengthened with the One Power. It's clearly very beautiful as well, but this wasn't meant solely to be art. It's a functional bridge that spans a distance that probably would have been impossible otherwise. Now imagine the types of things that could be created with the power if they were solely used to create art. That'd be pretty cool in my opinion. Think of like a thousand foot tall statue strengthened with the one power or different color creations that just weren't materials that they had available that you could create with the power. I think the possibilities are endless. So I know that mining using the One Power, or at least finding ores, is something that's mentioned as early as the Great Hunt, and it's something that Egwene has a proficiency with. She is said to be able to feel where ores were in the ground, and she could possibly bring them out of the ground. However, we never actually see this done in the story, and I'm sure there are uses that go beyond just finding ores that this skill could be used for. For example, finding water in deserts. Rand was able to find a vast underground water source near Roideon and bring it to the surface using his Angriol. Now imagine the types of resources that can be found and the ease of their excavation using the One Power. You could mine ores, find water, cut down trees, find oil. All of this could be accomplished with the One Power in a vastly quicker time frame that could be done otherwise. And this goes beyond just finding the resources. Think about how long it would take you to cut down and direct the fall of a tree that's over 50 feet tall. Think about all the planning necessary to make it safe just to take down one tree and how long it would take you to cut it down. How much strength it would take to cut that down. Now think that a channeler can essentially just laser the tree cut and blow it in a particular direction to direct its fall in just a matter of seconds. How efficient could creating lumber be with using the One Power? These types of uses for the One Power eliminate a lot of the danger and time that it takes to industrialize, and that would enable focus on other endeavors for the majority of the population. Now, of course, that brings up sort of like the automation thing going on now. What would happen to all the jobs? That's a question for another video. Now, this may be somewhat controversial, at least I think the implementation of what I'm about to describe would be controversial in the world, but it could also have incredible benefits. In our world, people go to therapy to deal with abuse, repressed emotions, we go to groups to deal with addictions, we use hypnosis to help treat people, uh, to help them stop smoking, to help them lose weight. All of these are addressing issues of the mind in some fashion that endanger us or reduce our quality of life. So I'm not suggesting that compulsion in the real sense be used here, where the wielder makes you worship them and obey your commands, but I can certainly see a form of compulsion, in a lower form at least, that helps people avoid bad behaviors. Or it could serve as a rehabilitation technique for criminals or help with the ailments of the mind. Imagine rather than paying 50 bucks for a smoking cessation hypnosis class with mixed results by being able to sit down with an Aes Sedai and in one meeting no longer be a smoker. These are the types of things that a mild form of compulsion could be used for. Now with this type of therapy, there are obvious drawbacks and a great need for oversight. By giving someone else this type of control over you or someone else, they could grossly misuse that power I think there's an obvious ethical debate here, but there's quite a bit of good that therapy like this could help with. I think there would need to be a strong governing body, like I said, lots of oversight and very harsh consequences for abuse of that power, but that actually seems like something that the White Tower could actually oversee, especially given the existence of something like the Oath Rod where you could potentially say you can't hurt anybody. So I'm curious of what you guys think of this one. Would you be open to somebody performing a mild form of compulsion on you to help you lose weight, something like that. I'm definitely curious what you think. Okay, so in the story, we get a number of creative uses for gateways. Obviously they're useful from traveling from place to place, but we've also seen them used to cut people in half. Uh, we've seen them used as a recon for battle, uh, giving an overhead view of a, of a battlefield. We've even seen them used as a way to enter the world of the dreams in the flesh. Now it's this last thing that gives us some interesting possibilities for the use of gateways. The implication that they can be used to not only open a doorway from location to location, but also into other planes of existence like the world of dreams, 
opens up a bunch of new possibilities. But let's start basic here, though. In an interview years ago, Robert Jordan said that gateways could be used to travel across great distances and even space. He said that it would take an extremely strong channeler to travel vast distances, like to other planets, and an extremely strong Sa'angriol to travel to other galaxies, but it would theoretically be possible. This obviously has some substantial possibilities. Gateways could be used to explore the cosmos, but you would certainly need to know where you were headed exactly and that it was a safe environment. If you opened a gateway to a location that was full of molten lava or onto the surface of the sun, you'd probably die. But this also opens up the possibility of using this as a weapon as well. Imagine a channeler opening a gateway into the vacuum of space above an army or a tent or a group of people and just having them sucked into space because of the difference in the air pressure. What about opening a gateway to the center of the sun above an army and blasting them with incredible heat and radiation to the point that it basically just disintegrates everything? Even if that were done for a second, that would annihilate an entire area, possibly a planet itself. Now this is an idea that probably wouldn't occur to the people of the Third Age, the ones that we just read a story about, but the ramifications of this are kind of scary, actually, if you think about it. But let's come back to the idea of using a gateway to actually travel somewhere, including the world of dreams. The world of dreams is essentially a parallel reality or an image of our reality, kind of like a shadow of it. The ability to open a gateway there implies the ability to open gateways into other realities and possibly other times. Could the one power be used for time travel? Now, I suppose we don't know that it can't be used for it. And the idea of it being a possibility is worth mentioning on this list. So can you guys think of any other creative uses for gateways? What about other uses for the one power I didn't mention? Absolutely let me know in the comments below. Let's get some serious discussion and speculation going here. I'm excited to read some of your ideas. Also, big thank you again to Fairlax for sponsoring this video on Patreon. If you are interested in sponsoring a video or checking out some of the other perks and like being featured on thegreatblight.com, for instance, check out the Patreon page. As I said before, we're trying to hire some folks. Would love your support. Check out that link in the description of the video. One other big thank you. I need to uh, change costume here real quick. Another sponsor that we'd like to thank is Delusions of Grendel for sponsoring this wig. You'll have to ask about the story behind it later, but uh, I want to thank her for purchasing this for the channel. Thank you, Delusions of Grendel. Quick update on thegreatblight.com as well. You can ignore this wig. We are adding things weekly to the website, specifically the wiki right now. If you are interested in helping write articles or you are a content creator, please check out the contributor application page. We'd love to have your help. You can also follow thegreatblight.com on social media at The Great Blight on Twitter and on Instagram. Make sure to like this video if you liked it, subscribe to the channel to be updated when I post new Wheel of Time content, and leave a comment on the video about what your ideas for other creative uses of the One Power would be. Thank you all for watching, and until next time, peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do. Mistress up above, slipping on a robe of blue. She prances down the staircase, a fancy oh so free. Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?